Hello everyone, welcome to the talk Codebug Interdata Center Bug Transfers Using Network Coding. I'm Shi Hao Zhen. This is a joint work with Sashan, Rachid, Hidish, and Kevin. We rely increasingly on cloud services, which are built on top of data centers and the interdata center networks among them. Correspondingly, the interdata center traffic continues to grow in a fast pace. Previously, the growth of the traffic was met by physical layer technological advancements. However, as we approach to the Shannon limit, it is no longer easy to cram more bits into the same fiber, and the operators are now forced to deploy expensive fiber to meet the demand. So what does interdata center traffic consist of? A recent study shows that 91.1% of the interdata center traffic are geo-replication, which replicates large files from one data center to multiple ones. We refer to such replications the block transfers. Therefore, over existing fiber infrastructure, we are interested in the classical multicast problem. Given the network topology, what is the maximum possible throughput for bulk transfers? There are four existing solutions for the multicast problem. Single path per destination, multiple path per destination, Steiner aberrations based solutions, and network coding. In what follows, we introduce those methods using simple examples. The simplest solution is to multicast to each destination using a single path. However, it is not optimal as it fails to utilize all available bandwidth. The better utilize the existing bandwidth, multipath multicasting utilizes multiple paths to each destination. However, this is still not optimal as paths carrying the same data could overlap, which is inefficient as the same data traverses through those overlapping links multiple times. Accordingly, we can avoid such duplicate transmission by allowing intermediate nodes to not only forward but also mirror data, which leads to the Steiner aberrations. Each Steiner aberrations is a directed tree with the source at the root and the destinations at the leaves. Given the tree structure, the same data is transmitted through each link exactly once and hence avoid the duplicate transmission. To multicast using Steiner aberrations, we compute and pack multiple aberrations from the source to the destinations. We then multicast by transferring one unit of data per aberrations concurrently. Although Stein aberrations avoid duplicate transmission, it is MP hard to find an optimal or least link solution. In practice, we rely on approximation algorithms to compute the suboptimal Stein aberrations, which could use the bandwidth inefficiently. On the other hand, to achieve optimal multicast throughput, we need to pack multiple Stein aberrations and the optimal throughput solution might consist of multiple suboptimal Steiner aberrations. Here we show a manually computed optimal non-coded solution, which consists of two disjoint Steiner aberrations, an optimal least link one, and a suboptimal one. Packing the right set of Steiner aberrations that yields the optimal multicast throughput is highly non-trivial, if not NP-hard. What is the optimal way to multicast? Well, instead of awarding the data as commodities, we notice that data is actually bits, which can be coded and decoded at the intermediate nodes. This observation leads to network coding, which yields optimal theoretical multicast throughput. For each multicast destination, network coding is able to achieve mean cut throughput as if all other destinations do not exist. In addition, there exist efficient polynomial time algorithms to compute the network coding solution, which makes network coding much more usable than packing Steiner aberrations. Given the benefits of network coding, we present coded bulk an end-to-end -end system that achieves near-optimal interdata center bulk transfer throughput by network coding. Coded bug improves bulk transfer throughput by 1.2 to 2.5 times compared to the state-of-the-art non-coded mechanisms on geo-distributed cloud testbeds. An important feature of coded bug is that it does not change the underlying transport and network layers, which makes coded bug easily deployable as an overlay service. Although there already exist projects adopting one-hop network coding to wireless networks, we encounter new pragmatic and fundamental challenges when coding multi-hop wired networks. The contributions of Codebug are to address those challenges by exploiting some unique properties of interdata center networks to alleviate practical challenges and using customized hop-by-hop -hop flow control to resolve fundamental challenges. We elaborate on those challenges in the following. We face multiple pragmatic challenges when coding in traditional wired ISP router networks. First, network coding requires storage and computation resources at the intermediate nodes to buffer the traffic and perform computations accordingly. 
while normal routers are not usually equipped with those resources. Second, the codes depend on the network topology. For a large network, computing the codes can be expensive. Third, we don't usually have a centralized entity that coordinates and hosts to enforce the codes. The deal is different for interdata center networks, which enable new opportunities beyond the capability of traditional wired ISP networks. First, each node is now a data center which has rich storage and computation resources. Second, the size of an interdata center network is usually much smaller, consisting of only tens of data centers rather than thousands of routers. Third, commercial interdata center networks embrace the SDN framework, which includes a logically centralized controller by design. Given the opportunities, network coding is a strong candidate to boost interdata center bulk transfer throughput. Meanwhile, we still need to overcome some fundamental challenges resulting from the asymmetric link problem. The existence of asymmetric links makes network coding techniques in the literature infeasible in practice. We explain as follows. To perform coding, we need to receive the upstream bits or packets first. The network coding literature usually omits this prerequisite by assuming all upstream packets arriving at each node simultaneously. However, Link latencies are non-uniform, and the upstream packets may traverse through different numbers of hops before arriving. Therefore, the same time arrival assumption is not valid in practice. Also, network coding literature does not consider interactive traffic. While in practice, sporadic high-priority interactive traffic deprives low-priority bulk traffic of available link capacity. In addition, network coding literature mostly considers only one bulk transfer, but we usually have multiple bulk transfers sharing the network. As a result, each bulk transfer competes and obtains only fractions of the link capacities. We use a simple example to illustrate the consequences of asymmetric links for network coding. Here two flows A and B are coded into one flow AX or B. If both A and B arrive at the data center at the same pace, their data can be coded and sent out directly. Due to non-uniform delay, packets from A and B could arrive asynchronously. We need to close the temporal gap by buffering early packets to wait for the lagging ones for coding. The problem is, buffers are of finite sizes and hence limited in the temporal gap they can handle. Because of the asymmetric links, such a gap can grow when one flow arrives at a higher rate than the other. Eventually, the ever-growing gap will exceed the capacity of the buffer and cause buffer overflow. The overflow can also occur at the downstream when the upstream flows arrive and get coded at higher rates than the available downstream link capacity. To avoid the overflow, we need a way to adjust the sending rates of the correlated coded flows. We propose a new hop by hop flow control mechanism to do that. Why do we need a new hop by hop flow control? The reason is that the dependency structure is different. Traditional hop by hop flow control mechanisms operate on individual flows, where each downstream flow depends on only one upstream flow. However, neural coded flows require multiple upstream flows to be encoded at intermediate nodes and as each downstream flow may depend on multiple upstream flows, and each upstream flow may impact multiple downstream flows. Codebuck's hop by hop flow control deals with this entangled flow dependency efficiently. Also, it ensures rate convergence, fair sharing, and freedom from deadlocks. The idea behind our customized hop by hop flow control is simple. We assign each coded flow some non-zero suitable buffer space. If a buffer is full, it back pressures its incoming traffic to reduce the rate. When one flow arrives faster than the coding speed, its buffer gets filled and pressures back. On the other hand, when the downstream link lacks outgoing capacity, its buffer gets filled and pauses coding. Since the coding is paused, the incoming buffers get filled and trigger the back pressure. Finally, we evaluate the effectiveness of coded buck by comparing it with other existing non-coded methods, including single path, multi-path, and Steiner aberrations where we multicast through a single Steiner aberrations computed by an approximation algorithm. Instead of simulations, we conducted our evaluations over real geodistributed cloud testbeds. We built our testbeds as an overlay on geodistributed data centers from Amazon AWS. The testbeds replicated the 9-node Internet 2 and 13-node B4 topologies. We consider a baseline of 6 ball transfers with 3 destinations each under 0.1 interactive traffic load where sporadic interactive traffic occupies 10% of the available link capacity. We then perform sensitivity analysis on two topologies against the interactive traffic load, the number of concurrent bulk transfers, and the number of destinations per bulk transfer. We discuss the results on varying interactive traffic load here. 
we vary the interacted traffic to occupy 5% to 20% of the link capacity. As expected, the throughput for all mechanisms decreases when the interactive traffic load increases. Standard operations outperforms single path as it transmits packets much more efficiently. It also outperforms multipath when the path diversity is low, such as Internet 2. In that case, it is more likely to have overlapping path and then standard operations is more effective than multipath. In comparison, Coded Box significantly outperforms all mechanisms across varying interactive traffic loads, which demonstrate the benefits of network coding. Please refer to our paper for other results. Overall, Coded Box outperforms all non coded methods significantly, especially when the number of destinations is smaller than the number of nodes in the network, which is usually the case. In conclusion, we presented Coded Box, an end to end system that boosts interdata center block transfer throughput via network coding. Through comprehensive evaluations, we show that Coded Box improves throughput for interdata center block transfers by 1.2 to 2.5 times compared to state of the art non coded mechanisms. Thank you. We open sourced our codes on GitHub and I'm happy to take any questions.